Are some gig economy corporations trying to make deals with unions? We'll take a look next on Your Labor Minute. Hello, I'm Mark Harrison. In 2019, California passed legislation that gave gig workers standing as employees. To fight back against that law that effectively derailed companies who rely on the independent worker business model to keep their stocks rising, Uber and Lyft spent $200 million lobbying for a state ballot issue that ensured their drivers would be exempt from that legislation, and it passed. And with that victory in hand, the rest of the country looked ripe for the same type of political strategy. Indeed, states now in play include Illinois, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and New York, where legislation, although recently stalled in the face of stiff opposition by some labor unions, still has a very good chance of being revisited. Now, that legislative model that Uber and Lyft are pushing is that it would allow their drivers bargaining rights and some benefits in exchange for not giving those workers the usual protections of employees. Meaning, sure, you can bargain, but you will still be considered independent contractors, meaning no unemployment insurance or other guarantees that go along with being classified as employees. Further, in New York, where Uber already has in place the Independent Drivers Guild, which is associated with the International Association of Machinists, the Uber plan, as laid out, would have signed an agreement with a single union. Now, once that union had signed up only 10% of the industry's eligible workers out of about 150,000 people, the state labor commissioner would certify the arrangement, and that union would then become the exclusive agents of all the workers in the industry in that state, effectively locking out other unions and locking in the workers to a rather toothless set of rules that in the end make little difference in their working lives. I'm Mark Harrison with your Labor Minutes.